May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hi, I'm Minister Marty Ringer, and thank you for joining us here at St. Mark Lutheran Church for another great Sunday service. Now today, we classify this as the birthday for the Lutheran Church, the Reformation Sunday, the Sunday that birthed the Protestant Church or the Protest Church, and the church that is still ready to transform now. I hope this sermon and service is a blessing to you. Reformation Sunday. For lifelong Lutherans, this day can give us a sense of pride in our denomination, but Reformation Sunday is not Lutheran Pride Day. It's certainly a time for us to celebrate and remember our church history, but it should also be a day that we re-examine our faith, that we decide if we will be like Martin Luther and stand alone for the truth. Today, we celebrate the heart of our faith, the gospel, the good news that truly sets us free. Now, hear the gospel of our Lord as it is written in John, the eighth chapter, starting at the 31st verse down to the 36th. And we say, glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household, but the son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we say, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, Father and Creator of all, we come to you this day, Lord God, asking for truth, Lord God, asking for freedom, Lord God, asking for understanding, Lord God, about ourselves, Lord God, and just to get closer to you, Lord. Lord God, I ask you to minimize me and you utilize me to speak to your people, Lord God. Let me just be the drum and you are the six that hit it to make the vibration go out to the masses, Lord God. Lord, I love you and I thank you in advance for all of your blessings in your holy name. Amen. And as always, happy Sunday, beautiful people. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. You know... You might have said something about me or talked about me when I'm doing my prayers, because what I'm trying to do is every once in a while we get stuck with doing the same prayer over and over and over again. And sometimes it just becomes routine. You know, it doesn't even mean anything after a while because you have said it so many times that it doesn't mean anything. So what I'm doing is challenging myself that each time that I do a prayer, I'm trying to do it just a little bit differently. The one that is the hardest is the one that I do before dinner or supper where it says, you know, uh, uh, Father, we thank you for this food that we're about to receive. Let it be. I'll say everybody says that. But anyway, that's just a sidebar. But yes, happy Sunday, everyone, especially my St. Mark family. Now, today we're talking about truth. We're talking about a situation where people are always challenging Jesus, but this time Jesus is... Where are we at right now? I, I, I need to put it all in the context, okay? Just so we are we all on the same page. So we are talking about John, the eighth chapter, starting at the uh, 31st verse down to the 36th verse. And in this, you know, a few chapters back, this were at a time in Jesus' ministry where people are starting to, starting to ask questions to Jesus. Because a little while ago, a few chapters back, he said this thing about eat my flesh and drink my blood. And people said, huh? Do what, Yahshua? Yeah, you know, some people in that time called him Yahshua versus, you know, we call him Jesus now. But they were like, say what? Eat your 
flesh and drink your blood. Okay, you know what? This is where I get off the boat at. And now Jesus is in Jerusalem telling them that if you be my disciples, you'll be set free. If you follow my teachings and my words, you will be set free. And they're sitting here saying, wait a minute. Hey, Jesus, let me holler at you, man. I, we ain't never been slaves. You see, we are descendants of Abraham. We've never been a slave. So what is this you coming to us trying to tell us that we are in slavery? Now, we're not going to cover the rest of this chapter, but later on, this actually becomes a real heated conversation. You know, where, where they start calling Jesus, you Samaritan and you know, Samaritan during this time was referred to as dogs and Jesus kind of getting ruffled to saying, well, y'all sons of Satan. You know, he's the father of lies and y'all believe in lies and it just gets worse. So they ready to pick up rocks and stone Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. But where we're at right now, which is interesting, and I want to make sure that we are really pulled into the context. Because right now. Jesus is trying to explain to them that they are slaves to sin. And the reason why he's using this parable, I would assume, or this relationship, I would assume, is because right now they're doing a festival. The festival is called the Sukkot, or the Festival of Tabernacles, or Booths. But it's a festival that... <laughs> The sole purpose of the festival is so the Jews can remember when they got out of slavery. When they were actually out of slavery and they were in the desert for the 40 years making these little tents and these booths and these places where they lived at. And this is reminding them of their history. This is why they're in Jerusalem. This is why they're all gathered together in the first place. So when they say we've never been slaves to anyone, Jesus is like, really? The mere fact that you're here celebrating. You're celebrating right now your freedom. But it's interesting how we forget our past and a lot of times we repeat it because we don't know our past. Jesus is sitting here saying, well, if y'all don't understand y'all history, y'all ain't going to understand me. If y'all can't relate to your own history, your laws, where you came from, then you, you're not going to be able to relate to me. And I'm sitting here telling you the truth. Okay, if you're at home, if you listening to this, I don't know, on the radio or whatever, I just need you to just say the truth. Okay, we, we messed up. We, just the truth. Okay, okay, we got it. Because see, when we are exposed to the truth, the truth sometimes cut both, both ways. See, the truth does set you free. But the truth also really kind of highlights us when we are really engulfed in the truth. Some of us don't even want to know the truth. We are fearful of the truth. I had a coworker some years ago, years, years ago, and this was before I was married and you know, nothing was, was wrong with his marriage or anything like that. But I remember asking him the question, just, just wondering, man, if your, if your wife was the best around on you, would you want to know about it? And I don't know what the context was or why we, I had that conversation or asked that question. But I remember him turning to me saying, no, I, I wouldn't want to know the truth. I wouldn't want to know. And it shocked me for a minute because I'm like, what? You wouldn't want to know if your missus is stepping out, huh? 
And he's like, no, because see, if I, if I know the truth, then what I believe right now, everything has to change. See, right now I believe everything is good and happy and everybody is comfortable in this family. But if I'm exposed to a new truth, then that means everything is going to have to change. I can't look at her the same way. I can't look at my kids the same way. This household is going to change. I'd rather be in the dark than to change. Now, I know some of you at home may be shaking your heads and saying, I don't, I don't know if I could do that or if I agree with that or not. But I, I must say it like this. A lot of us are in a similar boat. Now, I don't say about the marriage and all that stuff. You know, I, and it was no innuendo about his wife or anything like that. They are still married today. Great family. But, you know, a lot of us deal with not really wanting to know the truth, because once we are exposed to the truth, that means things have to change. And truth brings about a change. Reformation is about a change. When Martin Luther nailed the 95 Thesis up, he wasn't really trying to have change. He just had questions about some things that hadn't changed. And he wanted to know some more information about what was going on. Because what he's reading, what he feel like is truth is against what we're doing. And once you expose truth, you got to change. Martin Luther King did the same thing when he started bringing up questions to the other side and he's just bringing up things that haven't changed that needed to change based on the same principles that we all are created equal a lot of people don't want to change why because we think that we are already perfect we think that we are already made it that we uh we good. You know, we, 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 we believe that we aight. Do you know that the average human being makes at least three to six errors every hour? Per hour. We make three to six errors an hour. There was a study by a doctor, uh, uh, Alan Hobbs. Now, he was an aviation he will, he studies some aviation maintenance people, engineers actually, not just, you know, they, they look kind of high IQ. But they studied them and they videotaped them and they watched them for a week and realized per shift they made over 50 errors, obvious errors, over 50 in one shift. Most of us, if we actually know the truth or want to know the truth, we are so flawed. We have so many issues that are going on, but for some reason we feel like we, we good. A lot of us don't even know that we're sinning. A lot of us don't even know that we're wrong. A lot of us don't even know that we are going against God. Because we don't want to know the truth. You know, like in Romans 7 and 7, they, they were talking about the difference between law and sin. I'll read it for you just so we can understand and, and, and see, I'll get a picture of what I'm, what I'm talking about. In Romans 7 and 7, it says, what then should I say that the law is sin? No, by no means. Yet it has not been, if it had not been for the law, I would have not even known sin. I would not have even known what is to covet. If the law had not said, you shall not covet. You know, what he's saying here is I didn't even know that I was breaking rules until I found out there were rules. I didn't know that I was going against God's commandments because I didn't know the truth about the commandments. 
A lot of us go around all day hurting people, disrespecting people, putting people down, not even knowing it at all. You have to find the truth about ourselves. And yes, here's the thing about the truth. Yes, the truth hurts. A lot of time the truth hurts deeply. When you find out that that loved one is no longer here. Or you hear about the diagnosis that didn't come out favorable. Truth hurts when you find out there's no more chances. When all the time is expired, and this is the truth about the situation, it hurts. But see, the truth isn't made to hurt us, but it's made to transform us. Seek the kingdom of God, but seek truth. No matter where it takes you or how much it may hurt, seek the truth. Because like sometimes the truth might be, you just need to be quiet. You may talk too much, and that might be really, really the truth. Ecclesiastics says it like this, five and two. Never be rushed with your mouth. Nor let your heart be quick to utter a word before God, for God is in heaven and you are upon earth. Therefore, let your words be few. For dreams come with many cares and fools voice many words. So in so many words, the truth is sometimes we need to just shut up. That's the truth. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I'm, this is just the word. That's why I'm giving y'all references to know this is, this is the truth. The truth makes people see their own faults and makes them realize that I need to go a different direction because truth has set in. I think that's why scientists sometimes have a hard time believing in God. Because most scientists believe in science. Either it's a fact, it's proven, or it's non-proven. If we can't prove it, then it's not a fact. And that means that it's not true for if we can't prove it and we can't do it over and over and over again. If we can't do it over and over again. And they have a hard time believing. But the truth is, we can easily see what God is doing. But we can't easily see how God is doing it. Now, I don't know if y'all if, if count that. It's like we can see what God is doing, but it's not always easy to see how God is doing it. Or, for that matter, sometimes we can't see what God did. Even though we know he did it. Y'all, 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 y'all might be just wondering, like, okay, where is he going with it? There are times that situations that you've been in your life that you said it, it had to be God that got me out of there, and I don't know how he did it, but they changed their minds and they let me free, or, or, or I don't know how he answered the prayer, but I had no gas, but I still made it all the way three cities, two days. I've been driving and God didn't let me run out of gas. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. I don't know how I got this promotion. I don't know how I got this family. I don't know why I keep getting blessed and how he keeps blessing me. I don't know how he's doing it, but he's doing it. I know it's him. I know who's doing it. I don't know how he's doing it. I love to say this to scientists sometimes. It's like we could... You can figure out how God made the world, the earth, where this atom and that atom fused together to make some new atom, no new particle, and 
the whole world come, came together from the Big Bang and he made first the, the ground and the grass and all this stuff. Then they can try to break down what was first and what was second. You can figure out how he did it, yes. But you can't figure out how he did it, no. Because it's like this, yes, you can. You probably can create dirt. There's a way that you can probably in the lab create dirt. In a lab, you can probably figure out ways to make rock. Oxygen, H2O, you know, we can, water, we can put these things together to make all of these different things like God. But God always says the same thing over and over and over again. Why don't y'all use y'all own ingredients? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can make dirt, but can you use, make dirt out of your own ingredients? Don't take none of God's. Don't take anything that he's already created for you. Then you do it. That's the question that they can't answer. How you take something from nothing and create? Huh? Yeah, yeah. See, that's the truth that is hard for us to swallow sometimes. The truth is that we all are enslaved to something. That's unfortunately the truth. We always think of slavery as I got a master that I'm going into and uh, he's beating me. But no, a lot of us, most of us, actually all of us, slave to something. If you don't know, I bet the people around you know what it is. And all of us, you know, we have our own different things, you know. Some people, I don't, I don't, I don't know, they, they, they're a slave to a sale. If they see 50% off, 75% off, they, they, they gonna be on that website, they gonna be on that store with the mask on and everything, but they, they ain't gonna miss out on 75% off. Or buy one, get one free, what? I just know some people that's a slave to that. Some people are slaves to their own vices. Sometimes we call those addictions. But truth is we're a slave to them. Some people are slaves to I don't know, sweets, pies, cakes, food. That uh, food ain't safe around them. They gonna get a piece of chicken regardless. People are addicted and they're enslaved to so many different things. People are slaves to sex, drugs, you name it, there is someone that is a slave to it. And during this Reformation Sunday, Reformation time, it's time to find the truth about ourselves, find the truth about our slavery, and reform ourselves. Reform ourselves to anew. That's what God is asking us to do. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Find the truths in your life. And they, some of them are going to be hard. Some of them are going to almost want to take you out. But that's what gives you the freedom. Once you conquer that one, once you accept that truth, then you move on. Today is the birthday of the Lutheran Church, but it's also your birthday too. This is the first day of the rest of your life. What do you choose to do with it? What do you choose to reform? What truths do you accept? And don't be, don't be a conspiracy theorist, especially about your own life. Don't be a conspiracy theorist about your own truth and just will not accept the truth. 
Y'all, y'all know who I'm talking about or the kind of people that I'm talking about that regardless, they're not going to believe the truth. But the truth will set me free. The truth will set you free. The truth hurts, but it's meant to enlighten us and reform us. So brothers and sisters, look for that truth. Look for that truth that Jesus is bringing to us. His grace is sufficient. His grace is all we need. His love is all we need. And that, that is truth. We are justified by God's grace through our faith. Let us pray. Gracious Father, Lord God, thank you for allowing the truth to be right around the corner each time, Lord God. Lord God, thank you for bringing truth to us, Lord God. But now I ask you to protect our hearts as we deal with the truth, Lord God. As we deal with the trials and tribulations that the truth brings, Lord. Lord God, help us to reform ourselves, Lord God. To turn from our ways and seek the truth in you. In your holy name. We all say, Amen. Martin Luther stood before the religious elite and declared his faith in God's truth with the words, Here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God, Amen. So we stand here today before the throne of grace to pray for the world, the church, and all those in need. Let us pray. Here we stand, Lord, the people you have redeemed, giving thanks to you for you are good. Here we stand with those who reformed the church so long ago and with those who are still reforming the church today. Lord, keep your church secure and steadfast in your word that we may know the truth that sets us free. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Here we stand, Lord, thanking you for your grace. We thank you that you do not treat us as our sins deserve, that you do not repay us according to our wrongdoing. We thank you that true reformation is always your work and always being done in us out of your love for the whole world. We thank you that we have in Jesus all that we need for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Here we stand, Lord, your servants, your followers, your children, knowing that we all can cry out for help in times of trouble. Know that you will deliver and free us from all that ails us. Here we stand, Lord, praying for those on our prayer list and those whose names we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Reform our lives, O oh God. Hear our prayers and renew us by your spirit that we may love and serve you and one another. This we pray through the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus challenged the rich man to sell what he had and to give it to the poor. 
He challenges us today to be generous in our giving because in God's mercy, we are already rich. If you have been blessed by the ministry, bless us in your donations and giving through your online banking, through Cash App at dollar sign St. Mark Lutheran, through Venmo at St. Mark Lutheran dash church, or by sending a check or money order to our mailing address, 4137 Washington Road, East Point, Georgia, 30344. Amen. Since we are justified by God's grace through faith, let us confirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, go out into the world and find truth. Search for the truth, but be prepared when you find what you're looking for. Go now in peace and serve the Lord.